Hello coders, my name is Peter Fisher from How To Code Well and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to handle and manage JavaScript exceptions. Let's get into the code. Before I start, I should say that all of this code is available in the How To Code Well JS Exception Handling Tutorial Repository. Links to all of these things are in the show notes below. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a try block. So type try and then have two curly braces like so. This is where we're going to include all of the code that we want to perform. So let's type console.log and then pass in a string. I'm just going to type starting. After the try block, we're going to have a catch block. Now this catch block will catch the exception and handle that exception. So we need to have some parentheses and we need to supply the exception that was thrown. In this case, we're just going to have the variable of E. So in this catch block, we can handle the exception that was thrown. So let's type console.log and then E. Okay, after saving this file, let's go ahead and run it. As you can see, we have the output of starting. This is from this console.log on line two. We haven't caused an exception and therefore we haven't caught one and therefore we don't have any output about the exception because one hasn't been thrown yet. So let's go ahead and cause an exception. The easiest way to cause an exception is to call upon a function that doesn't exist. So under line two, we're gonna call upon a function and we're going to call this function user add. Now this function doesn't exist, so we're going to throw an exception. If I run this again, we should see some output here. I'm just going to drag this here just to make a little bit of room. So we can see that we have the starting text here on line two, and we can see that we have caught an exception. So the exception is a reference error, user add is not defined. This is the stack trace that we have here. If we scroll to the right here, we can see that we have a line number and a reference number. So this is line three. Line three was where we were calling it. So user add, that's where it was thrown. And we can see the line five, this is how we handled it. So on console.log E. Now, personally, I think the variable E needs to be a little bit more verbose. It doesn't explain really what that is. So we're going to change that to be error. like so. Okay, now we understand the try and the catch block. Now we're going to move on to the finally block. So let's go to two underscore finally dot JS. Now we're going to add some code here that gets ran regardless of whether an exception was caught. And we do this using the finally block. So type finally after the catch block. In this block, we're going to type console dot log and then a string of stopping. Okay, let's save that and run the second example. Again, we're causing an error here because we've thrown an exception. So we have a reference error, user add is not defined. But we've also got this output here called stopping. So we started, we did some work and that throwed an exception, but we've also got some output here. Now this is very handy, especially if you're working and configuring user interfaces. Perhaps you've got some Ajax calls or some async calls and you're waiting for things to happen or user behaviors. And if they don't happen, perhaps it's going to throw an exception, but you shouldn't be crashing your whole system down. So, with the finally call, you can have some code that runs regardless of whether there is an exception thrown or not. Let's go into the third example now. This is where we're creating our own exceptions to throw. Let's use a real world example. So I'm going to have a variable called cart. This is going to be a JSON object. This cart is going to have an items array. The items themselves are going to be JSON objects. Each item will have a name. And we're just going to supply a name of one of my courses, which is Docker in motion. And we're going to supply a price 
of 250. Okay, let's create another item. This is going to have the name of PHP for beginners. And we're going to have no price. So we're not going to set a price at all. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to loop over each one of these items and we're going to come up with a total. So what I want to do is type cart dot items dot for each. We're going to create a function and in this function we're going to get the total. So we're going to type console dot log and it is item dot price. We're going to supply item here and index. Okay, this is going to throw an exception. This is because only one of these items has a price. So we want to catch that. Above the console.log, let's create an if condition. So if item dot price is equal to undefined, we're going to throw a new syntax error. And we supply a message into this syntax error. So for example, we can have price is required, like so. So that will throw a syntax error if the price is undefined. Let's go ahead and run this. This is three underscore throw.js. Let's run that. And we have this error here. Now the error is that we have the output 250. That's because the first item has 250 as the price. But then we have this syntax error, price is required. Notice the error is red. And this is because we haven't handled this. We need to handle this. And we handle this using the try catch block as I've shown you before. So let's go ahead and wrap this in a try catch block. As before, after the try block, we need to have a catch block and we're going to catch the error. And let's say, for instance, we're not interested in the whole stack trace or the, the error itself. We just want the name of the error. We can do that because the error variable is actually the object that was thrown. So we can do a console.log of error dot name. Okay, let's press save, and run this again. So we don't have any red output here. This is because we've handled this exception. It is a syntax error. That is the name of the error. To get the message out, we would use error.message. Let's just copy that here and put message in replacement of name. Let's run that again and we can get the name of the error and the actual message. If we wanted to get the stack trace, we could do that. Let's copy this line here, line 21, and then replace message with stack. So we now have the full stack trace as we had before. It's worth noting that the try catch blocks will only handle runtime errors. These won't catch any parse errors. So if you write code incorrectly and perhaps you've called something wrong or perhaps you've got a, a curly brace in the wrong place, then it's not going to catch those kind of errors. They are parse errors. What we're handling here is runtime errors, errors that are actually thrown through the actual runtime of the code. My name's been Peter Fisher. You can catch me at How to Code Well. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.